All right. On today's episode of uh, the Anime Village podcast, I welcome on a very special guest. He's Matthew Elkins. He's a voice actor, stuntman, and voice of Zentetsu from Blue Lock. Matthew, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm super excited to have you on the show. This is really awesome. Well, I can't I can't thank you enough for letting me be here. I'm absolutely pumped about it. Um, yeah, so let's dive in. Whatever you yeah. want, man. Yeah, huge Blue Lock. I'm a huge Blue Lock fan. So I love, I mean, that show exploded. So it's got to be real. It's going to be really cool to talk to you about how you got the voice and what it's been like the experience of working on Blue Lock. But first, I want to know, where did your anime fandom begin? Okay, wow. Yeah. So I've told this story a couple times to a few people. <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as how I kind of dived into anime and, you know, my my roots with it, they, they're, they're not very big. So I grew up in a very country family, right? Very, uh, very country. <laughs> I, <laughs> I live currently in Fort Worth, but um, I went to high school there. But every summer, my family would throw me in the back of my, my granddad's station wagon or his F-150. I'd sometimes we'd just ride all the way out there in the bed of the truck out to Rotan, Texas. And in Rotan, you've got a Dairy Queen, a stoplight, and that's it. <laughs> so... Um, you know, we didn't really have TV or anything out there, but we were just out there to work cows and fix fence and things like that. Um, so as far as anime, when I was a kid, the only thing I ever saw was actually Pokemon or a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh. So when I got the role in Blue Lock and I really kind of started my anime journey, it wasn't until I was almost 29 years old that I really started diving into this incredible world that is anime. That's just absolutely massive, if that wow. makes sense. Wow, that's crazy. So, like, it started when you got the part of Blue Lock, and it just kind well, of... it, it didn't quite start with Blue Lock. It actually started with another show. Um, it's called Natsume's Book of Friends. So, I, I'll always have a special place in my heart for Jade Saxton. Uh, she's an amazing director for Crunchyroll. The only thing she does better than that is uh, she's a voice actor. So um she's in shows like my hero academia she's i mean i'm sure you've heard her name around she's absolutely fabulous but she gave me my first role um and the story behind that is kind of a fun one too if you want i can yeah i want to i want to hear about it because i was going <laughs> to ask how did you get into voice over work so i want to see like what, how did that all plan out so uh, as you mentioned earlier i, I am a stunt man um that's kind of where i got my start um and I was doing stunts for this TV show called Washington's Armor. And they called me on set to do equestrian stunt work. So that, I don't know if you know about equestrian work, but that's horse riding pretty much. Horse riding, jumping off horses, doing fights on horseback. And I got there and I reported to the office and I said, hey, Matthew Elkins, uh, here's my contract. I'm here to do equestrian work. Where do I meet the Wranglers? Where do I go? Where do I find the horses? And they said, um... Matt, I think there's been a mistake, sir, because we don't we don't have any horse stuff on the agenda. Oh, and I was like, are you sure? Because the contract says. <laughs> and they said, sir, we're positive. And I said, well, do you think you should check? I wasn't trying to be rude, but I was just like, do you think you should check? You know, because hey, yeah. I'm on contract to be paid for two weeks. And she said, and the woman said, I'm not trying to be rude, sir, but I doubt you're doing any horse stunts we don't have any horses. <laughs> so I was like, ah, fair enough. Uh, so they, they referenced it with the director and the producers and it turns out there'd been a mix up. Um, but they said, we'll throw you on the stunt team. and We'll get you on utility stunts, which is anytime a stunt comes up, Oh my gosh, we forgot to book somebody. They grab the utility guy and he does it. Yeah. Um, so I sat for two weeks just on the sideline, stuffing my face with craft services <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they never once used me. And I was so depressed. Um, if you know anything about the entertainment world, it's not the money. You know, I'm sure after you get high enough, it's the money. But for me, it was the exposure. Okay, my foot's in the door. It's time yeah. for me to have my big break. Right. So to not be used was just heartbreaking, you know, and I was just so depressed, you know, and Set around with another guy. He was a extra on set. His name was Justin. Um, and we became really, really good friends because we were just sitting all day, every day. Um, and I got to know him really well. And I loved hanging out with him. Became one of my best friends in the whole world. 
sometimes you find somebody you just click with and me and yeah. Justin click like that. So after it was over, we were like, screw this. Let's go out. You know, it's been two weeks. We got our paychecks. Let's go out. Let's have a beer, have some, have dinner. You know, let's talk about this. Just let the steam off a little bit. And he said, I'm, I'm going to bring my wife. And I said, Oh, cool. Girl tonight. Okay. So I grabbed a good friend of mine. Um, her name's Monet Lerner. And we all went out just to hang out. Um, and while we were hanging out, I was sharing with them my my story, who I am, what I do, that I'm an actor, a performer. And Jade said, oh, that's cool. And uh, she offered me an audition. And I was like, mm, audition for what? What are you? And she's like, well, Matt, I'm actually a director. And I was like, oh, cool. What do you direct? And she's like, I'm a director for Crunchyroll. I direct a lot of different animes. And like I said before, I'm I'm very country. You know, I was like, anime what's that like cartoons <laughs> and she's like oh oh sweetheart you have no idea <laughs> and she gave, me, <laughs> she gave me an audition and i i actually booked that that gig um and that launched this journey because i did that show for three seasons it's wow. called natsume's book of friends it's an amazing anime if you haven't had the chance to check it out please do yourself a favor not me you do yourself a favor Go watch that show. It's amazing. It's an older show from the 90s, but um, we we just started dubbing it into English. And I got to tell you, it's it may be the best show I've ever done. And that's saying something because I'm on Blue Lock. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out because I need I need a new show to watch. I feel like I've been repeating a bunch of animes. <laughs> so and that'd be cool. So I'll check that out. So that's that's awesome. So let's kind of open your world to anime and every and and like Crunchyroll and all the anime world and now did that like did you start like watching more shows or anything after yeah that? well I I started um I started uh by researching that show you know and I was like well you know it's out in the Japanese I guess I'll watch the Japanese and so I watched it and I was like that's pretty cool I never really explored the, all this animation you know that's pretty cool wow there's a lot of titles on here and next thing you know, I mean, I've been locked in my room for like two weeks and I'm just consuming media like a madman because <laughs> I'm realizing how did I not get involved in this world before? I'm like a huge nerd now. I love this crap. It's amazing. Like, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy how like one show or like one thing can kind of just like turn you on to like. It, it sparks a flame in you. You know what yeah. I mean? And the next thing you know, you got this furnace burning in your chest and you're just like, I can't get enough. Oh my god, that's crazy! So the Natsumi, uh, no friend, no friends, open up more Just doors. For friends, you. yeah. Did it open I'm up sorry? more? Did it open up more doors for you, like yeah. for other jobs and stuff? So what's it been like in the voiceover world for for that? So one thing about Crunchyroll that I love is it's a big family. Um, you know, it they they everybody that works in that field, uh, who who works for Crunchyroll, they have these studios that line the halls, right? So it's like studio one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so on. And everybody kind of becomes a big family when somebody's doing like a local theater show. Like when I first went out with uh, my good friend Monet, who's also a voice actress. If you haven't seen her work, you should definitely check her work out. She's amazing. She's also in Blue Lock. Oh, um, but uh, she took me out. She's like, hey, come out. You should see this show, you know? um jade's gonna be there and i was like oh that's a cool networking event and i like jade and justin that'll be fun didn't know anybody right fast forward like two years now i just recently went out and caught another show that they were doing and i realized i knew like everyone there and it's because like everybody becomes such tight close friends you know and it's like being inducted into this family you know and it's really amazing because it's not a big competition between everybody. It's more of, I know I can sound like a broken record, but it's like a family, you know, it's yeah. not like, Oh man, I'm competing with Jim or John or Jacob. No, it's more like, Oh, you got a role, Matt. Congratulations. Or, Oh, you got a role. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. There's so much love that flows between the studios and the friendships. I mean, you make friendships that'll last a lifetime. I promise you that. That's awesome. That's so cool. And I, I've, that's, that's, that's like, that's gotta be really cool to be something part of that. And you guys root for each other. And it's not like anyone, no one's cheering against each other. And it's yes. And that's what blew my mind because that's not the experience that I've had in other forms of entertainment. You know, yeah, with my was, live, with my live action career is very much a competition. You know, I didn't have any ill will for anyone, but it was a competition. You know what I mean? How can I get my foot above? But like, 
me and Drew, we do auditions. A lot of times we do them together and just rock, paper, scissors, who's going to go first. And then if I go first and there's something that he liked in my audition, he's not stealing it. I say, Hey, Drew, do that too. You know, I think it's going to give you a leg up and he's doing that. Or same thing with Monet, you know, it's very much, you know, a brotherhood, a sisterhood, um, nothing but love and support. In I that love industry. it. I love it. That's so cool. And that's really awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I see pics of like, not to sound creepy, but on your Instagram or <laughs> guys share stuff. Like, I feel like I always see like um, you with like Drew or you guys like sharing stuff. Um, like, or I think you were in Drew's like TikTok recently, or, like an event or something like that. You like kind of jumped yeah. into it. Yeah. But it's- oh, yeah. That was a, uh, we were at Beta Quest. And yeah. He was, yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. doing an interview with the Wait For It podcast. And I just decided I'd walk in there and like, blow in his ear and he's like i knew matt was gonna do that because i do it every chance i get anytime he's trying to focus hard on something i have to go in there and just be like the (laughs) little (laughs) devil on his shoulders causing issues i love it i love it and it sounded like and yeah i think from my like my conversation with drew it sounded like all like all the blue black guys are really close to each other dude it if you think a soccer team is close just wait till you meet the guys who are portraying a soccer team we are like this man all of us so close really close friends you know and when it comes to like i said when it comes to watching anime i try to watch everything that they're in and that's tough because there's a lot of guys cast in blue lock but (laughs) any chance i get i'm gonna try to watch whatever they're in i'm gonna watch everything drew's in i'm gonna watch everything derek's in i'm gonna watch this is in watch everything monet's in like we're a team 100 percent. that's awesome yeah that's that's crazy you got a lot you got a lot of uh anime to watch of a lot of people there, so. <laughs> and I, a lot of that credit goes to jonathan rigg because he is a director that he never pits us against each other you know he he likes to help us find those creative liberties to where we can build on each other yeah which is what entertainment should be a collaborative art where you utilize my strengths and i utilize yours not this like who's going to shine the brightest kind of thing Mm, yeah entertainment world has got to be really tough i know and i know you mentioned you've done like you're a stuntman i mean what's it been like being a stuntman how did you get it okay wait i've just got to pause real quick because that phone call it's drew breedlove oh my god (laughs) (laughs) so he's gonna crack up i'm not gonna answer right now but he's gonna crack up whenever um whenever he watches this and he realizes that i'm talking about how close we are Next thing you know, he's calling me on the phone because he, he calls funny. me daily just to just to chit chat. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, you could tell him that you're on the show too, that <laughs> he was on the show. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, oh my god, that's that's awesome. Um, uh, but how did you get into stunt work? Like, what what has that been like? What made you get into the stunt world? Because that seems like such a like a badass job of like you know you're doing all this crazy work that people don't want to do but like it seems so extreme but makes movies great and stuff will great well I, I will definitely share the story with you and I will say just throwing it out there it is an amazing experience because whenever you're doing these whether it's life-threatening or just you know injury-threatening stuff just like I was talking about Crunchyroll you develop a very strong camaraderie with the guys and girls that you're doing it with um And I guess, you know, that's probably what draws me to the entertainment industry in general is the relationships. I've always been all about relationships. Who am I bonding with? And stunt work is no different because I was playing college baseball at the time. And I graduated from the University of Texas, Arlington, where I got my theater degree. I walked across the stage, held up my diploma, thought to myself, nice, finished my baseball career, got my degree in theater. I'm going to conquer the world. And then I looked out at the audience and I thought to myself, Matt, what the hell are you going to do now? (laughs) You know, fast forward a few months, I'm living on my mom's couch, you know, just because I told her I just need to sack there for a few days. I'm living on my mom's couch, getting fat. The big leagues never called, you know, and I'm just like, what do I do? I'm really depressed because you know, my whole purpose had always been athletics. You know, I get up in the morning, I run, I work out because I need my body to be in top physical shape for that, for, for baseball. And I pursued uh, classical theater in college because it was my passion, but I hadn't really started on any kind of endeavors. I'd never done anything professional. (laughs) 
<clears throat> excuse me um so on the couch and just don't know what to do you know i'm 20 probably like 26 at the time because i stretched four years into six um, <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, maybe 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 eight <laughs> uh, but uh you know i i just didn't know what to do it wasn't even a laziness thing as much as as much as just depression and one day my mom came home from work and i'm in a bathrobe and in my tidy whities eating, eating cheerios on the couch and she's like hey sweetie i uh, heard a a radio announcement, uh, radio advertisement today about medieval times. I think you should check that out. They're hiring. And I was, of course, like, thanks, mom, but I'm a little bit depressed right now. Yeah. And she said, Matt, you don't understand. You're living on my couch. Maybe you should check that out. <laughs> and I was like, light bulb. I see. <laughs> You're telling me I need to go do it. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I went and I applied there, uh, got hired on figured I wouldn't get the gig because I knew nothing about sword play. I knew nothing about horses, um, but they, they teach me everything. And I've been there for six years and that's where I've received the majority of my stunt training. Um, as far as uh, single, single sword, single ax, double hand ax, double hand sword. Uh, let's see here. I've got, Single bola, double bola, sh shield work, horseback sword, horseback javelin, horseback jousting, and the list goes on and on. That's where I got a lot of my tumbling stuff, where I learned how to do rollouts, falls off a horseback. Um, you know, I've seen some gnarly stuff there. Uh, I mean, that's not the only stunt training I have. I've also done a lot of extensive stunt training with John Can, with, who... Uh, his company's action pack stunts where I learned how to do all my wire and ratchet work um, as well as high falls, uh, medium falls, hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, things like that. But it, it all started with medieval times. Uh, that's where I started my journey and realized that, oh my gosh, it does add up. Mom's wisdom is true. I've got my love for athletic work and performance, and I'm able to put them together into this beautiful world that is uh, live theater at medieval times where I get to do stunt work and act and perform in front of a thousand plus people five days a week. That's, that's awesome. That's so cool. And that's great. A good mom's mother's yeah. <laughs> or instinct knew, you know, the get you out there and do it. And that's awesome. That it's cool that you brought up like it's the athletic and theater, which is, which is a really good point. But I mean, have you had any, any like thing go wrong or any i mean you hear stories of like people breaking arms or anything like that have you broke anything on any action so i have actually um i i, I will I'll, I'll share one um <laughs> so sometimes companies or uh television programs or movies they'll ask you not to share injuries that you have sustained while working on their production because they don't want it to you know shed a negative light yeah. So I might leave out uh, a couple names, but okay. I'm sure you can put the pieces together. Um, I was doing some sword play for a commercial, and um, we had just about finished, right? And and the director said, you know what? Let's get a safety shot. Let's get one more safety so we don't miss anything. And I'm already thinking about what I'm going to go eat for dinner. And he says, okay, let's do a safety and so he's like, everybody give it your all. Let's really ramp it up. Let's really ramp it up. And so we go in to do the sword fight. And the guy I'm performing with, he threw a head instead of a leg. Wow. Now, one thing that's important about sword play is that you don't just memorize your choreography. Because it doesn't matter <laughs> where the sword's supposed to go. It matters where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As my good friend John Can always says, sharp things are sharp and they will cut you. Um, heavy things are heavy and they will break stuff well he threw a head instead of a leg and I blocked the leg and I credit myself for as much blame as I do my best friend it was my best friend at the time um, he hit me in my forehead and it split me all the way down to my skull um, and I just remember a large pop of light right um, I'm sitting there very confused I'm like hmm what's going on and then I go oh yeah we're filming a commercial and I look at my best friend who seems really upset and i'm like why is he upset and everything's moving very slow for me at the moment i'm like why why is he upset and i was like did did we get it did we get the shot and then i look around and i see the camera guy and his face is just doing this right here 
<laughs> and I mean, just open jawed and panic in his eyes. And I'm like, what's wrong? And then I just feel this pitter patter of warm liquid. Right. Uh -oh. And I taste the metallic pennies in my mouth. And I'm like, did I get hurt? And the camera guy throws his camera on the ground and he goes, fired. We're all getting fired. We're all getting <laughs> leave him fired. And I was like, huh? And then, I mean, it just suddenly all I can see is red and it's just gushing blood down my face. And my friend grabs him by the hand. He's like, I got to get you to the hospital. I got to get you to the hospital. And the director, <laughs> the director at the time, he's my good friend, but we're good friends now. But he, he grabs Freighter's arm and he's like, we're all getting fired. We're all getting fired. <laughs> and and I'm like, can I go to the hospital? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm passing and we get to the hospital and it cr always cracks me up because we get to the hospital, we go in there. And of course the nurse is like, oh my God. And the cop is like, what happened to you? And I point at my friend and go, he hit me in the head with a sword. And the cop's like, what? <laughs> He's like reaching for his gun. I'm like, what's going on here? And I'm like, oh, no, no, we we work in stunt work. It was an accident. It was an accident. Um, but yeah, so pretty much what happened is the sword split me down to my skull and I had to get 26 stitches. Jeez. 13 in the dissolvable bottom layer and then they closed it a second time with 13 on top of that um thought my acting career was over you know i was like maybe i could play the guy in the goonies i don't know if you've seen the goonies yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like maybe i could play him uh, maybe yeah, <laughs> maybe i could play frankenstein but you know that's it because i mean the swelling i had two heads up here oh god uh, <laughs> but uh the company amazing company like I said, they're, they're awesome. They paid for the top plastic surgeon in Dallas, to, paid for me to be out of work for like half a year while it knitted back together. I'm great. It was, it was, it was actually a really great experience in hindsight. Cause I'm like, Oh, they took care of me. No corners were cut. Yeah. Nobody was trying to cheat me out of anything. You know, they even told me, they were like, Hey, you want to buy something just to make you feel better? Feel free. Just charge it to the card. This is a family. We're taking care of you. And oh. so you know, I, 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 I love that company very, very much. I, this is purely a story of entertainment right now. I'm not yeah. shedding any negative light on them. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that was one of the scariest for me, um, where I personally was injured. Um, I've seen some other pretty gnarly things happen to guys and I actually consider myself pretty lucky. That's um, good. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's scary man well i mean good on you that i mean still the you know stick with it obviously too because that's also a scary thing i feel like you know some people even athletes or anyone who gets injured in any certain way kind of affects them going forward sometimes they're not the same and sometimes they get nervous you know well you know actually uh a good representation of that is actually in blue lock uh remember when chiggity he has the he yeah for the acl and yeah that's one reason I think that show is so good is because it really draws on things you can find in life. You know, he, he's not the soccer player that he once was because he's too scared to run on it. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And I, I mean, I know that feels be playing, playing sports of like, I've had injuries or concussions where I just didn't like, I was afraid sometimes to like, I don't want to re hurt my knee. And then you kind of like start going moving and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm like good to move again. So I, I could, I totally related with, with a character because like my knees were messed up for like a little yeah while from like soccer and basketball and every sport but try to have yeah, a lot of my good friends had gotten tommy john surgery for their arms when yeah they were pitchers and they were like scariest thing was coming back because now pretty much i, I always think of it like a video game where you have like the little lives you know yeah and it's like uh oh my life was used up now if i die i die for real you know? <laughs> yeah exactly. if i injure my arm again i'm actually out versus yeah. having my emergency surgery that's going to fix it you know that kind of thing yeah yeah it's true it's very true it's a good like the way to think about it but it's really cool that you do stunt work and that's all, like and it's awesome that you were able to bounce back from that it's so cool that you're part of medieval times i have to catch you down there next time i go to dallas or something go to a show hey you've got it on record right now if you come down to Dallas, bring whoever you want tickets on me, all right? Oh, I appreciate that. That's that's awesome. I never been to one, so it'd be really cool to go check it out. And you know what'll be really fun? Um, you know, I can't make any promises, but uh my good friend who is also in Blue Lock, Monet Lerner, she's the cast manager over there and she plays the queen in the show. And Drew Breedlove, that's where I met him. He plays Bachita in Blue Lock. I met him because he was my squire. <laughs> so I'm sure he'd come out and eat some some baby dragon and <laughs> just chill out with you if you wanted. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'd love to come and visit you guys and do something like that. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> I always joke with Drew because like when 
when we started at Medieval Times, I was the big, big knight. You know what I mean? I was the big, big guy on campus and he was my little squire. Yeah. Um, and now the roles have kind of flipped because he plays Bacha, like the <laughs> ar- arguably, I mean, you could almost argue the biggest character in anime right now. Yeah. I, I, I play Zontetsu, which I'm extremely grateful for. But I'm just saying now I'm like, Drew, I was nice to you. Don't forget me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's get into Blue Lock too, because uh, <laughs> did you think Blue Lock would be as big as it is right now? So I did not think going to be big when i read the synopsis like yeah. when i read the casting announcement and i googled some stuff online i thought oh this will just be another anime a good one but another anime when i watched it in the japanese i knew it from the second the intro happened that this was going to be massive because i'm dyslexic so i have a hard time reading it's a reading disorder i don't know if you know what dyslexia is but yeah. even watching it in the j where i have to read the the uh the subtitles i was hooked and i mean hooked from the second i started watching it to after i finished been binge watching all the episodes i knew it was i knew it was gonna be massive and i mean it's and it just keeps surpassing my expectations every day i think drew sent me a screenshot the other day um blue lock just got its own its own liquor <laughs> it's like bachita yeah on the, on the bottle <laughs> i was just like are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it just keeps pump, keeps bringing people back. And I think they've got a Nagi spinoff movie coming out. Yeah. Um, and they've got a season two coming out. And I'm just over here with my fingers crossed, like, please, God, let us dub this, please. Because, you know, my hope is that, you know, I'm part of Team V. <laughs> so if it's a Nagi spinoff, I probably get a pretty good part. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I, I think I saw that recently that there was, and I, I didn't know that were, I was doing some research on Zentetsu before we got, came on here, and I saw that there was a Nagi spinoff. I was like, oh, that's interesting that yeah. they're gonna do that. So that'd be awesome if you were able to be a part of that. Well, I was talking to Drew. It's really interesting too to kind of compare uh, the dynamics of like in Japan, Nagi is is one of the most popular characters. Right. Well, if you come over here to the U.S. I think it's Bachida, it's Chiggity, um, Kudagami. Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. I think Bachida and uh, Nagi are really popular in Japan. Um, uh, uh, Kudagami and Chiggity are really popular here in the U.S. So it's really funny to see how like the show is extremely popular both places, but the different characters that really shine in the different regions. And I think that probably has a lot to do with just my own personal opinion, like here in America, we're really big into our superheroes. You know, yeah. we have a, our super strength and our super speed. Well, you look at Chiggity, he's super fast. You look at Kunigami's he's strong. So it's like, I think we kind of still find that kind of, those kind of things that we like in the show. You know what I mean? Yeah, attached to them. Um, but attached to the superheroes in the, in the, in the show. Like yeah, the, and, yeah. It, and it's not to say that the other characters aren't popular. I'm just saying when they, when they rank them of like, oh, most popular characters, it's like, oh, how interesting is that? You know, yeah. you kind of see based on country to country what's more popular in this country versus that country and all it's that. very it's very interesting because i thought i actually thought bachiro was like pop, more popular than isagi like the main character in like the show as well too which is very really interesting because i always see more bachiro stuff pop up yeah I've, I've noticed that too actually yeah. he, i mean he's an extremely popular character yeah um, and i i've got to say i've kind of got the that bug too because i've watched the episode I was watching it with my brother today where he finally decides to break the chains and run on his leg again and still getting goosebumps still yeah yeah times still getting goosebumps <laughs> it's very it's very interesting um so i recently was talking to um i had a, a guest on he, he's a professional athlete plays plays in the nfl um he watches blue lock i mean what's it like to hear like when uh, like it's funny because you have athletes watching blue lock and it's just what's it like to hear like someone like that who's in like you know who plays in the nfl and you know who's an athlete himself and like who watches blue lock what's it like to hear like guys like that watching you guys perform and i think it's one of the coolest things in the world um i i absolutely love that feeling because uh, like i mentioned earlier that's what i wanted like yeah. people say, what do you want to be when you grow up? When I was a kid, I wanted to play pro baseball. You know, um, sadly that didn't come to be, but at the same time, like 
I wouldn't trade what I have now for anything, but it's just like what I always wanted was that. So of course there's a piece of me that is just like just burning with happiness. Cause I'm like, Oh man, yes. My idols like what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, another, my first experience with that was my older brother. Um, he, he's very country. I've probably said that a million times, but he, uh, he works cows and he, he runs our, our ranch out in West Texas. That's what he does. Um, but prior to that, he was drafted by the Texas Rangers, oh, left-handed wow. pitcher. I mean, the guy threw 93 to 95 miles an hour. I mean, just about the most amazing athlete I've ever seen in my life. Right. Yeah. Um, and I guess though I was very big into athletics, I was kind of the nerdy theater kid. Right. Yeah. And so he always, we always joke around you're a jock he's like you're a nerd so we always go back and forth with that but i remember when i got cast in blue lock uh we were out working the cows and i said hey you mind if i you know turn in early because i need to do some research i just got cast and he he's so supportive no one loves me like my older brother andrew elkins does he says hey i'll i'll go i'll go with you and i was like well i'm probably gonna have to watch anime and he's like oh and i can see it on his face he's like Oh, I already said I'd go with him. <laughs> so, so of course he goes in there and we, I put on episode one and after it's over, I look at him and I'm like, dude, that was cool. And he's like, yeah, that was really cool. And I was like, I'm probably going to watch episode two. And he's like, well, I'll probably stay and watch it with you. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we watch episode two. And then after that, I'm like, thanks, bro. Thanks for staying with me. It's more fun when I have somebody bounce ideas off of it. And he's like, episode three, episode three, episode three. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew right then that the show was going to be extremely popular because my brother, who is about as country as it gets, is hooked on this awesome. anime. You know what I mean? Blue Lock has something for everyone. And that's one of the the most amazing parts about the show. I credit not only the creators, but also Jonathan Rigg, the director. Um, if you ever get a chance, I highly recommend interviewing him because his directing style is phenomenal. And he knows how to tweak things to make sure that every single person out there is going to get something special from this show. That's awesome. So. Yeah, I would love to. I love to interview him. Yeah, it's so cool that your brother got hooked on it, and it, it must be. He must be so proud of you too to be like you know part of something big like that. And that's got to be. That's got to be awesome. Well, and he he's my idol, dude. He's my yeah. hero. He's my idol. Like I said, he he was drafted by the Texas Rangers, and every time he comes into town. Because obviously he lives out there on the ranch, but every time he comes into town, he's like, "What do you say we watch Blue Lock?" And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, "We've already watched this," but I'm burning with happiness because I'm like, "Yes," because yeah. it's my way of just you know feeling this uh, success in my life of like my hero likes what I do. Oh, you know, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's so cool, though. That's awesome, that guys. That uh, he wants to watch it, and you know, he he's happy with your success, and you're able to watch it together. That's, that's, that's so cool. I, I think that's, um, that's such a great experience to have experience with your brother and everything too. Um, <laughs> Family's important, man. Yeah. That's, that's why, that, yeah, definitely. That, that's What's why that? I always oh, say in like medieval times and crunchy rolls family, because that's the best, that's one of the most meaningful words that I can use is it's a family. Yeah. You know? Big time, big time. It's true. And I think family in any aspect of like, you know, Crunchyroll, Medieval Times, your your family, like having those connections and those that support to cast makes you uh, like a better person and like helps you grow. And it's always nice to know that someone has your back when, you know, when you sometimes maybe you don't believe in yourself, but someone's going to have your back in any aspect of that. Yeah, uh, I, I 100% agree with that. Um, and it always makes you feel good whenever you see yourself grow in their eyes, too. Because I remember when we were finishing up season three of Natsume's Book of Friends, uh, Jay teared up a little bit. And I was oh. like, I was getting ready to tease her because that's what I like to do. I like to tease her. Um, and I was about to tease her. And I, then I stopped and I was like, what's wrong? And she was just like, I'm just really, really touched that like I was your first director. And, you know, three seasons ago, you couldn't have done what you just did. And she's <laughs> like, but now you're just coming to the booth and knock it out you know what i mean and um you know i owe her that and i'll always have a special place in my heart for her because she took the risk on me you know and she gave me my first shot so 
That's awesome. Nice. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So uh, that's great too. That's uh, made her tear up. You couldn't even couldn't couldn't pick on her. <laughs> um, well, but- she, she's a really special person, man, and she's so talented at so many things, except for cards. We were all <laughs> playing cards last night, and I kicked her butt. So, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to, uh, yeah, keep Jade away from the cards. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So Zentetsu's like. Uh, you know, a character that's part of Team V with um, Nagi and um, I forgot the guy's name. He has purple hair. Oh, know? Rayo. Rayo, yeah. Like, what's it, like, did you have to get, like, any mannerisms down to be Zentetsu when you watched the J? Or, like, did you kind of just become Can you yourself? say that one more time? I'm sorry, the computer kind of glitched out there. What did you say? Oh, no, that's no problem. Um, did you have to get any mannerisms to, to get, like, the voice or anything for Zentetsu or like, did you just kind of like under, like watching the sub kind of picked up on it or. I am, I, I, I am classically trained. Um, and my, I really love the idea, um, of like, uh, a lot of people say you want to really get to know your character, you know, walk in their shoes, like literally where, where the type of shoes they would wear and kind of really get down what's going on with this person. Um, and with Zentetsu, I definitely tried to do that. You know, like, I <laughs> call me out for being a nerd, whatever. But I even wore fake glasses. You know, I got so into the show, I would start wearing fake glasses. I mean, that's what he does. He literally wears fake glasses to try to seem smarter. And yeah. so I, I would do that. And I already felt like I could relate to this character in so many ways. Because um, he is not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. But we're surrounded by people who love us and we know that that's important, you know, and we want to do our best to try to impress them. And I'm always kind of connecting with him because I'll say things that don't make any sense. And then I'll see Jade look at me and I'll be like, she knows, she knows. <laughs> or Monet will look at me and I'll be like, ah, Monet knows too, <laughs> but <laughs> it's okay. Cause they're my friends, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely was already trying to like, you know, I, I started playing soccer um, in my free time, I started wearing the fake glasses. I just tried to consume as much uh, um, Zentetsu media as I could to kind of yeah. get a hold of his backstory. You know, found out that he comes from a family of dentists. Um, found out that he's aware of his flaws. He's he might be the comedic relief who's dumb, but he knows he's dumb. You yeah. know, it's not like he's because there's there's in my opinion, when it comes to playing a comedic character who's dumb, you can play it one of two ways or the most popular ways to play it. You can do kind of the character that has no idea and he's just a bumbling idiot because he is. Yeah. Or you can go, um, I don't know if you ever saw the show Johnny English. Um, one thing mm-hmm. I love about that movie is it's it's about this dumb spy, <laughs> but he's aware of every mistake he makes and is incredibly embarrassed by it but he just keeps making them. And so I had to, I kind of had to take it for myself and say, okay, which one is on Tetsu? Is he unaware of his flaws or is he aware of them and embarrassed by them? And that's kind of the way that I see him is he's aware of his shortcomings and his flaws. And he tries to make up for them with his athletic, his athletic ability, which is something else I felt like I could really relate to because I'm like, okay, what are my strengths in life? One yeah. thing that I've always been able to succeed with is my athletic ability, you know, and part of acting portraying characters is to be honest, you know, throw out, Oh, what do I want to be? Who should I be? And really focus on who are you? What are you? And how did you get there? And where are you trying to go? And then plug that into the characters. And that's what I really tried to do with Santetsu. I was like, I'm a stunt man. You know, I take blows to the head, to the leg, you know, five, five nights a week, you know, and then I get up and I do it again. And I was like, that's the way I see Zontetsu. He's that way. You know what I mean? He just kind of grunts through things. And he tries to look smart along the way. And I was like, that's Matt Elkins. (laughs) So (laughs) so I I really relate to that character in that way. So both, yes, as far as physical things go, you know, the glasses, the cleats, playing soccer, but also on these emotional levels, I try to plug myself into these characters. Um, Because the more honest you can be, the easier it is to just get in the booth and just let it come out rather than trying to plan it, just become the character and then let it come out naturally. That's awesome. That's really cool. I like that. I like that approach to it because some people, you know, they take different approaches with it. It's always cool to hear like every 
uh, voice over actors like approach to like how they become the character or like how they can relate to the character. And now I will say, I will say, if you're going to play Johnny Cash, maybe don't go do a bunch of drugs. That might not be the best option. <laughs> well, don't you know. get, don't get too method of it. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't go too method. Yeah, you can yeah. go too far. <laughs> yeah. Don't go too far. But, yeah. No, it's, it's such a cool aspect. That's, that's a really cool thing. And that's awesome because you, you do a great job. You nail the character and you can see, you can hear the passion in your voice about being the character. And then when you like watching the show and then having that character, Again, it's like it's very it's like watching him. And then now I can see it like break, brought the life, like talking to you. <laughs> well, in you know, one thing that um, the person that gets the least amount of credit for developing the character when it comes to anime is the director. Right. Right. Because Jonathan Rigg was the lead director and then Jordan Dash Cruz was the assistant director. And I worked with both of them to create Zentetsu's voice and we tried out a lot of different things. It was not just a one day I walked in there and it was done. Man. We tried it, tried it again. And then me and Jonathan thought we had something. And then Jordan, Jordan checked it out. And Jordan was like, I like it, but do y'all want to try this? And then we took his advice and kind of tweaked it again. And we finally, you know, ended up with our product. But if anybody thinks that we just walked in there and it was done, no, we tried things and tried things and tweaked it and changed it and like a several, a lot of trial and error until we found what we thought. This is it. Now we found where we're going with this character. I yeah, and I think a lot of people think with voice acting, like it's like you can just walk in and do it and just like talk. But I don't think people realize when you're in there and it's from speaking from, from with you and then speaking with Drew and. You know other and a couple other voice actors it's a lot of like it is acting it's you have to nail the emotions and you have to get the certain voice and if you don't get that voice right it doesn't make that character like you know attractive to people or like want to yeah. listen to like you know be, have that character be the favorite or vice versa it just doesn't sound right it doesn't fit with that character's voice so it's really cool that you're you explain that too because i don't think a lot of people know that too well <laughs> the scariest thing about the voice acting is in my opinion, one thing I'll, I'll touch on, the scariest thing, in my opinion, and you never know, you may have somebody much much wiser than me come on here and tell you tomorrow, uh, Matt doesn't know what he's talking about. But the scariest thing for me, what I've come to find is you can always be replaced when you're just the voice. And oh, what I mean is yeah. if it's if it's live action, they can replace you if they want. They can do whatever they want to. They can kill you off in two and a half men like Charlie Sheen, you know, or they can, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's many actors who have been replaced in something. It's like, oh, that's not the same actor. But the thing about acting is they can replace me. And if they replace me with a good enough actor who can kind of merge the voices, you know, like, okay, I'll in- do a little bit of Matt and a little bit of my own thing. No one ever even has to know. You know what yeah, I mean? That's true. So my job is always on the line. I can't do really great the first episode and then phone it in for the rest of the season because if it's not good they could get me out of there you Jeez. know yeah so you got to bring your a game every single time you step in that booth you can't go in there and say oh, i'm not feeling it today no 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 you're not feeling it today you might lose that role you know go in there and crunchy is really great you know they're not going to just like cut me out they're an yeah. amazing company <laughs> they, they care about the employees but i'm just saying don't take for granted that you're in the booth because once you get in there it's not like oh i'm here i'm not going anywhere no you're you can go somewhere if they don't want you you're out they'll get somebody who is willing to give 110 percent. you know yeah that's it's it's crazy but that's that's a really good point that's something that you don't really like people won't like you said it's an act and people won't notice like people know on a on a live action show but in voice acting it they won't notice because you don't know who's in the booth you're just seeing the character so yeah it's, that's a really solid point that you made well and that's one reason that you never want to lie on your yeah. audition either because um a lot of my directing friends have told me they're like yeah sometimes i'll cast an actor who does this really amazing accent or creates this really amazing character right through through their demo or through their audition and then i bring them into the booth and it turns out they can only do that for like 15 seconds wow. And it's like, oh, really? And it's like, yeah, they can't sustain the character. You need to, if you market a voice that you have, if you market a character that you can portray, make sure it's a character that you can keep portraying. 
because there are there's a lot of voices you'd be surprised that you can do but you can only do for a few minutes and then you drop the accent or right. oh it's too hard on my throat i can't be growling like that all the time some you know what i mean make sure it's something that your body can do and it can keep doing because yeah. otherwise you're not really able to portray that character you can just do a snippet of that character and I'm sure I've never gotten to have the honor of being a director for anime, but I'm sure there's nothing more irritating than, fuck, I thought he could do that. And he can't, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a solid point too, because I, yeah, I, I think I've done some voices just like playing around, like just joking around with like friends or something like that. And I was like, there's no way I could sustain that voice for over like. Well, you'd be surprised how hard that can be because. Yeah a lot of people take that for granted. You know, it's almost like, oh, boo-hoo, you got to go in the booth and do that voice. I'd kill to do that. And it's like, well, you might have a little more respect for it if it was like, oh, the pressure's on. I got to get this right. Oh, man, I still got to keep doing it. Oh, my throat's getting a little dry. You know, it's like, you'd be surprised. It, it's an art that deserves respect that I don't always think gets the respect it deserves. It's it's very true. And I, honestly, for you guys to nail the emotion, keep a uh, change of voices, and keep it going for as long as you do over seasons as well too it's it's imp it's super impressive because without you guys i don't know we wouldn't have dubbed shows or you know even cartoons or anything like that they like watch and it's super it's super thank like we're so all we should all be super thankful for you guys too for us and like bring us entertainment every day because you know as much as we watch foot sports and stuff like that for entertainment or whatever movies and stuff live action voiceover you guys are bringing us entertainment all the time it's not as easy as everyone thinks it is well i appreciate you saying that it really means a lot to me thank you very much yeah of course man of course i'm, I'm a big fan man i gotta i am root <laughs> for it now i gotta go to medieval times and yes you know, come out my... and check out the show i'm telling yeah, you gotta... you won't be disappointed yeah. it is a very very fun show and obviously i like it i've been there for six years um, and I don't know if you can see in the background, I've got my souvenirs all I over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Those are awesome. Those are so cool. Yeah, I'd love to come down there. Also, I got to see if I can find some Zen Zentetsu gear to, you know, and the Bachiri gear, I got to root you and Drew on. So. Oh, <laughs> heck yeah. Hey, <laughs> man, if you have, if you want to come out, I'm doing a con um, in Pasadena, Texas, right by Houston in July, July 1st and 2nd. I'm going to have a lot of merch out there. Oh. Um, all kinds of Zentetsu merch I'll be selling, so... If yeah. you show up, it's it's on the house. But oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll see if, if I can it, get if down. If anybody's there. interested, let me that real quick. Come to Bacon. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask you if you're doing any events. I saw that was a bunch of the guys from Blue Lock are doing events together, right? Yeah, yeah. That's one thing that's really fun is what I've come to find when it comes to conventions. Um, they like to get a show and get a bunch of the guys from the show. So uh, when I went out and did my first con. I got to go with Drew, my best friend, because, um, you know, I've only really started in the voiceover game about two years ago yeah. um, is when I started. And so Drew, he had started about a year before me and he's kind of showing me the ropes. You know, I didn't have to learn it on my own. He was he was teaching and guiding me. I see him as a mentor, oh. you know, and um, so that was really fun. And what I've come to find is I would actually just kind of some exciting news for me, at least, is I just signed with a with a convention agent, with an entertainment agent, um, uh, conventions, et cetera. And Drew's also with them. So we're going to probably be doing a whole bunch of the same cons together. And that's, that's awesome, awesome to get to go out and know that I'm going to get to do it with my best friend. You know what I mean? That's awesome. That's, hey, that's awesome. Congratulations on that. So that's really cool. You guys will do cons and everything and, you know, get to go travel to a bunch of cool places. That's that's really cool. Yeah, it's I, I – um, uh, it's really fun too. the the cons are really they're really good to us you know like they pay for our travel and our hotel and they get us out there and make sure that we're comfortable and we've got stuff to eat and like i think drew breedlove he's out in the uk right now he's Jeez. doing a yeah i know right that's why when i told you earlier when i was like drew don't forget me i'm like yeah, don't yeah. forget me Drew, drew's over there like i'll see you in a few days i'm going to england <laughs> That's crazy. That's awesome. Good friend. I think he mentioned that he was working on that one last time I talked to him. That there was like something in the works about going to the UK. I think he mentioned that off air to me. But that's awesome that he's able to go over there. Well, the guy deserves it. Uh, you know, I I always tell people when they ask, you know, if they're like, "Hey, give me the short version. 
how did you get into voice work? I say horses. And I was like, huh? <laughs> but you, obviously, you know the story. When yeah. you extend it out, it's because I could ride. And because I could ride, I went to go do stunts on the TV show where it's so serendipitous because I thought this is the worst thing that ever happened to me. But really, if I hadn't gone to work on that show and they had decided that they did need me rather than they didn't need me, I never would have sat around getting to talk to Justin and just becoming best friends with him. And then I never would have had dinner with his wife, who's the one who cast me. So it's one of those things that, you know, if God shuts a door, trust me, there's a window that's opening up because I thought that was the most heartbreaking thing in the world. It turned yeah. out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how life works out like that and how like things just kind of like pan out. Like sometimes you think something like you just mentioned, like the win one window is shut or a door shuts and then another door opens for another opportunity that, you know, it could be, you know, it's working out great for you. Yeah. And I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, dude, I, I mean, I want to get on my hands and knees and thank everybody that took me through that journey because I'm having an absolute blast meeting, relate, get, building relationships that I'm going to have for the rest of my life, getting to be a part of the career that I love, you know, like, it's just awesome. That's awesome. Well, I have a couple more questions before we. Um... Yeah, sorry, I'm so long winded. No, Feel free no, anytime to be like, Matt, you need to no. shut up because I just. Yeah. No, you're all. awesome, dude. <laughs> this is this has been a great interview. It's it's really cool. I mean, you've hit a lot of points that, um, I didn't even have down for questions. So it's kind of been like a nice <laughs> rift. I've been kind of going away from the questions and just like chatting with you because I think you've hit a lot of points that a lot of people don't think realize that voice I voice actors go through and. You talked about a lot of like touching things. It's really cool. A lot of, you're big into family and things like that. So I love that too. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and no problem. Um, so I want to ask a question because I work for a company called Anime Village. This is their podcast. Um, and here we're building our own mangas. Um, and they're all different genres from shonen, action, slice of life, supernatural, supernatural. But also with those mangas, we have a metaverse games and RPGs. So you can go into the metaverse, you can hang out with friends called Village 555. But also those like those metaverse, it's, there's like four different metaverses based on those mangas. So you can hop into the Shonen manga or Action, which is Adamanta, which is the title behind me. Um, so you can play as those characters. We wanted to get your thoughts, you know, being in the anime world. And what do you think about like, you know, a company being able to, you know, doing doing something like this? I personally think it's awesome. Um, one thing that I love about anime and people involved in anime companies that are anime companies is it's all about pushing the limits, going to the next level, seeing what else is out there. Um, I would love to try that out. Um, I can be a little technology challenged, but I would love to give it a go. Nothing would bring me more joy than to experience that. Um, you know, a lot of live action, big time live action actors or movies, they borrow stuff from anime because anime will try it first. Right. You know what I mean? And that, that you know, that sounds like that's what Anime Village is doing too. They're trying stuff out. They're going to say, okay, let's try this out. Let's see what happens. See if people enjoy this. See if it's there's an audience for for this, if there's a group of individuals that will enjoy this. And I say more power to you because when it comes time, like whenever it's all said and done, I'm going to be first in line. Y'all better be ready to fight me for it because I think it sounds awesome. Oh, well, we really appreciate that. Yeah, we have a website. And I can, I'll, I'll, and I'll send you the website. The website we will have, like we have, you can read our mon uh, chapter one of our, our, of our, um, of our manga so that's on there and i'll send you that link along with the downloadable like just the village 555 is downloadable so you can hop in there and just run around and check it out it's really cool looking they did like the programmers who created that did a really great job and we also have like a thing called reps where it kind of like gives our customers and like our fans like the best experience in the sense of like read engage play stream which means like read the mangas you can engage on the metaverse 555 or um you know eventually we'll have like some tokens and coins to get out there for people and then play which is a game so then eventually we'd like to have the streaming creating animes off of our mangas eventually oh that'd be so cool yeah yeah yeah. i think that'd be let me ask you let me turn it around on you actually and ask you is there one that you recommend i check out first 
Um, right now, Adamanto and like what we're doing with it is so the, that's kind of more in the works than all of them. That's like our first one, and then the Supernatural will be coming out after that. Adamanto is really phenomenal. The artwork in it is fantastic. But I have gotten together with our our co founder, who is uh, both our founders are like big anime fans, so they're trying to do they're just fans, so they're trying to do something for the fans too. Um, Adamanto, the story about it and everything, like the whole the whole volume one will be hopefully coming out. Like not, I think by the end of next by next year by next year it should be coming out. But I'll, by just hearing about volume one and what's happening in it, and it has like a twist of like this history twist in there and everything that he pulled in there. So there's like got like Greek gods and there's ancient like um, strategists in there and like all this stuff it's phenomenal like what he's done and like reading about it and um yeah it's uh, it's a lot of fun i'm hoping uh i i created a character so i'm hoping maybe we can get him in there um so i'm like oh, you, you you said you created one of the characters uh yeah i'm saying? like working on a character development too myself <laughs> nice yeah. man that's badass yeah so how do how's the best way for me to keep up with this is there a website or social media or what yeah so you can contact us on our our social media, which is my anime village, which is on Instagram, and then it's also on TikTok, and then also as well, we have a website called myanimevillage.com, and which will I'll, um, I'll share that with you after with afterwards too. But yeah, it's it's fun, man. There's a lot of updates. The RPGs in the works too. So of Adamanto, it's going to be interlocked with the metaverse. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Like it's going to be cool to like once everything gets to going, but the RPG is going to be pretty sweet too. Cause it's like a different thing. It's not like it's not leveling up the character because the character's already at like a level, but it's teaching like using the character, but learning how to use the swords that he uses or the weapons. He That's uses. so cool. man. Yeah, it's a different perspective on it. So it's cool. I love that. That is awesome. And I'm 100% going to be your biggest fan. I promise ah. you that. I appreciate um, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we appreciate you being on the show, man. This has been <laughs> phenomenal to have you on the show. No, I, thanks for having me. And I, I mean, I I can't tell you how much of a rush I get from, you know, getting to be involved in this world, getting yeah. to to learn learn so much. Because there, what's strange for me is that I didn't realize how big the world of anime was. Right, like. And I mean, specifically anime, not not just animation, but like uh, I was watching a video about like what's kind of the difference in, you know, traditional U.S. animation versus like Japanese animation known as anime. You know, where where do you kind of how do you draw the line? Right. You know, what's what, you know, and obviously there's several opinions out there. I'm not trying to say that this is the one thing, but it's so fascinating because they said U.S. animation tends to focus more on action and movement whereas anime kind of focuses on more detail in the actual artwork which is a really interesting thing for me because now when i watch the two like let's say i watch maybe disney versus something on crunchyroll i can kind of see oh wow i didn't notice that before but yeah that's the difference in goofy and the characters in hell's paradise you know what i mean i can see kind of the different it's just so it's just fascinating to me i i can I mean, I nerd out on this stuff all day long. And I hope you've come to realize that being a nerd, awesome. <laughs> it's it's cool. It's cool now. Yeah. I used to I always tell people when I'm when I was growing up in high school, I, like I was a big anime fan, but I always felt like I had to like hide it. Cause I was also like I was playing sports <laughs> and stuff, but then like my friends who weren't into anime I would like hide my like anime movies and like <laughs> they're, they're coming over, hide the Funko Pops, hide yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get them under the bed. <laughs> bury, bury them all right now. But now it's like it's interesting now to see the development and how popular it is and like getting to talk to like people who are just anime fans and how like it's such a a worldwide like it's something like pretty much taking over like what's going on here in America. Like you see actors like Michael B. Jordan is a huge anime fan and like yeah. in pre three he put all like the the fight with Majin Vegeta and Goku in it like that's where he drew the yeah, inspiration and, from and, and they're not hiding it either like they yeah. openly come out and they're like hey this is what I love and I'm taking it from anime and I'm applying it to live action because I mean there's a lot of actors out there who are you know huge stars who are like no that's awesome yeah. you know I love anime and truth be told I, my head's gonna be too big to get out the door by the time this interview's over but like that's kind of I get that same feeling from hearing stuff about like Michael B. Jordan 
as I do when you're saying like the NFL guy that you were interviewing said, oh yeah, I watch Blue Lock because I'm over here like, they like my work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really cool. It's cool to see. And I like, I felt like, well, so I interviewed, um, his name is Juwan Williams and he plays for the, he plays for the Minnesota Vikings. And nice. he, he, I interviewed him and I was asking him what he was watching. He's like, I'm watching Blue Lock. And he said he's been really loving it. And I just like, I knew when I was interviewing you, I was like, I have to ask Matt this question, like, of like, do you know, like that athletes are watching you guys like do, That's so cool, do the work and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's cool, man. Like you guys make a big impact on it. And I think you guys make a big, big impact on people's lives. You give them a nice escape for reality too, like watching the shows and stuff like that. So I, that's, you know, it's, it's really nice. Well, I appreciate that. I really do because uh, you know, we touched on it earlier, but like, I, I don't just walk in there. I really try to hound my, my craft and practice it with repetition, repetition, and then just hours of research, you know, um, there are some actors who can just walk in there and do it. But for me, no matter how big or how small the part is, I try to research the show, you know, even if I'm doing what we call Walla, which is just like small little bit parts here or there. Yeah, I always try to do episode one through episode three and then watch my episode that I'm going to go perform in. And if I have time, I fill in the gap. You know what I mean? That's because awesome. I want to know as much about that world as I can to, to make it as realistic and honest as I can. Well, man, Matt, <laughs> I hope I, th- I hope you get more roles down the line and I'm sure you're going to you know, you're going to be a great voice actor in the anime world because it's like if you, you have a ton of passion for it, you can just see it. And, you know, being a part of Blue Lock, I hope more doors open up for you and everything because you definitely deserve it, man. You work hard. You can t- you can hear it in your voice and how passionate you are about it. Well, I, I appreciate it, man. I, I really appreciate you saying that. And just to touch on that, I'll say, you know, you you become like the people you surround yourself with. And, you know, I've touched on it before, but I've got amazing friends like Jade, uh, my friend Jeremy Inman, uh, Jonathan Rigg, Monet Lerner drew breed love and i'll stop there because the list goes on and on and on but surround yourself with the people who you want to emulate who you want to be like because they're rubbing off on me <laughs> or at least i hope i hope they are because yeah. a couple of years ago if you said i would be you know in the in the anime world i would have been like nah not a chance not good enough <laughs> for that but i guess if I, I hung around you hang around the denzel washington has that say, has a saying that says you hang around the barbershop long enough you're gonna get a haircut so that's true hang, that's... hang around the people you want to be like and you'll wind up being like them <laughs> that's awesome i love that well matt this has been an amazing interview interview man and you know congratulations on your success uh like i said i'm definitely gonna have to find my way down to medieval times in dallas and check out a show because i would love to go i've never been so it'll be a lot of fun and i really appreciate your time man i really wish you the best of luck with everything because i think things are going to be really big for you down the line yeah and to hey you know, obviously, feel when I say someone's my friend, I really mean it. I, I feel a real connection with you. Feel free to call me. But also, um, if anybody wants to stay in touch on my social media, uh, Instagram's Matthew Elkins underscore six. That's where I post all my upcoming cons and roles that I'm doing. So um, message me on there. Sometimes it takes me a minute to respond because uh, luckily I, I have had this current situation where I'm getting a lot of stuff in my inbox because of the hype of Blue Lock and whatnot. But I try to get to everybody down the line. So if anybody ever needs anything, let me know. Appreciate it, Matt. Have a good one. You too, brother.